So I'm going to call Franny up here because she's going to be speaking to us today. That's why you get a break, all right? Okay? Because Franny was in Dallas last weekend and went to a conference. She's going to tell us about it and tell us how it moved her and maybe how it can move us as well, right? Yeah. So, for you. Thanks. I'm just going to pray really quick. Um, Fredo. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to share my experience with uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. I just pray that um, it, it's very comfortable, that it's just a sharing and that they participate um, with this and that you're here, Lord. We just invite you in to speak through me that whatever it is that I have to say is, um, is because it's because it's led by you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So I was able to go to Texas last week and just participate with um, with the young young leaders of the church. So I was the oldest, <laughs> but most everybody there was between twenty and twenty and thirty four. I'm thirty four. <laughs> Still young, yes, yes. So it was a really great experience, and I'm going to share with you guys some pictures of some of the fun things we do, and then I'm going to talk about the spiritual aspect of it all. But it was called Ignite, and we did that a lot of really great inside of what our um, kind of our bunk kind of looked like. This was the middle area where everybody just kind of got together because there was a woman's area and there was a men's area, and this was the middle. And that was. Um, Anthony, he was telling, we had a little area where, a time where he was talking about um, millennials and um, how they're really not leaving the church, and this is all really great news. So that's kind of um, where, where he was there with a sermon for us. And that was all the fun stuff for the sake of having fun, and just letting your hair down and having a really good time, just to have time together. But we had a spiritual aspect, and I'm going to read to you the verse. There was an overarching verse that Ignite used, and it goes alongside with a T-shirt. I'm going to show you that we got. So this was made by the church, and we all got one. And it says, Inside Out. And on the back, it has a cross. And it was orange on yellow, so I'm not sure if you guys can all see it all. But the whole reason is it came from a verse. And I'll read that to you guys right now. It's from Romans 12, 1 to 8. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. And it goes on to say, For this is by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that has been assigned. For as one body, we have many members, and not the members that have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy and proportion to faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher and teaching, the exhorter and exhortation, the giver and generosity, the leader and diligence, and the compassionate and cheerfulness. So what really was going, the inside out aspect is that we are one, but we are many. But we have to work on ourselves on the inside so that we can work on ourselves for the outside, so we can, you know, reach out to our community in whichever way our community needs us to. So in order to do that, uh, we ended up having four different workshops and four different sessions, and it was up to you um, to choose what workshop you wanted to do. The first session spoke to me. Um, I looked at one of the workshops, and I was like, oh, okay, I've got to do this one because it was actually a theme that God has been working in my life for, I want to say, about six weeks. I'm a little thick skulled. It takes time sometimes for me to think, oh, I think God's trying to tell me something. And it was funny because before I went to Ignite, the workshop that I want to share with you guys with, the very word was pressed on me that I put it on my phone as the wallpaper 
<laughs> having no idea that when I got to Ignite, God was going to speak to me about it. Uh, it, was called, it was rest. Rest. It was something that I was so needing, uh, not knowing how to imp- you know, implement it into my life. So well, the first session, when I saw that one of the workshops was rest and self-care, I thought, okay, God. I'm going to sign up for this one. Uh, you've got lots to say to me. And he really did. So I'm going to take this time to just share with you guys about this workshop. And so I know you guys weren't there, but that you can take from maybe some tidbits from the workshop as if you were there. One of the really cool things I'm going to show it to you is that it started off with a verse in the Bible. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. And this is a message translation. So just keep that in mind. It's not the NIV. This is, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Now, at that time, we read that verse and we were able to kind of break apart and to groups and to say, what does that say to you? When you read that verse, what do you think that means? I have to be (laughs) honest, our group (laughs) said, well, okay, how about we come away with God and Jesus in Jamaica, in a hammock. (laughs) I mean, that's what, if Jesus is saying, come away with me, Okay, so we like we pictured ourselves in a hammock. You know, we could subtly hear a seagull, the waves. That just sounded really like that would restore my soul. <laughs> other people had really other interesting answers, and there was a reason for that. He says, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unformed rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So that was the whole thing if, from the workshop that we all just kind of picked apart. Now, I can't, the reason why our group, we were like, okay, we want to go away with Jesus to Jamaica. <laughs> Realistically, we cannot just go away with Jesus to Jamaica every week, even if we really want to. It's unrealistic. But there are simple things that we can do that will help rest and take care of yourself during the week. Something that was really important to try to figure out is uh, what does that look like for you? Now, I, I, have, I don't know if you've ever heard of Myers-Briggs before. It's a personality test. Now, I was one of the only people in the group that had never taken this test. But most other people have. So I'm going to share with you what that meant. It's a test. And um, I took it online after. And I got a bunch of letters. And mine was INFJ. These letters stand for words. And the words would be E for you're an extrovert. Or I is your introvert. And there's a whole bunch of others. There's sensing, intuition, thinking, feeling, judgment, and perception. And based on what you score on this personality test, it will throw together some letters, and that's what you are. But for the sake of time, we're going to talk about an extroversion and an introversion. Because whether, you're an, whether you are an introvert, rest looks different for you than if you're an extrovert. I found out, surprisingly enough, that I was an introvert. I didn't see that coming, but that's because when I rest and when I come away with Jesus, I like to do it in my own personal alone time. And the whole theme was how can you come away with Jesus and put that in with resting? And a lot of people had a lot of really great ideas. A way that I found that I do because I'm an introvert is I like to get on the couch wrap myself in a blanket, get a warm cup of coffee or tea, and my Bible. So I am comfortably alone, and I am able to read my Bible, and that's how God speaks to me. 
other people in our group that were also introverts said that they preferred to put on some soft music, some soft worship music, and that that was comforting for them. They would be alone, they'd have their earbuds in, and they could pull Jesus in and come away with him. Other people said they'd like to go on for walks. They like to go for a walk, a nature walk, and that they could appreciate God's creation. They could look at the leaves, they could hear birds. They felt close to God, and they were able to recharge and take care of themselves. If an introvert, such as myself, does not do that, what happens is you get tired and you get burned out. And that's the... That's what Jesus started with. Are you tired and are you burnt out? Come away with me. Now an introvert would think of ways to do that in solitude and alone. An extrovert would get rest and take care of themselves in a completely different way. And that's okay, it's different, but it's right for them. What we learned about extroverts is that getting together in fellowship is getting rest. They feel rest. They feel like they have recharged. So this, this Sundays, these fellowship times is a good thing for an extrovert to do, to talk, to laugh. We had a lot of really great ideas from extroverts on, on what that looked like. One person said, just getting together with their friends and laughing. That belly laugh that you can get that's so good for your soul recharges this person and they can do that and they can talk about you know a praise you know like like just a melinda was saying um about the mascara like we all got a good laugh about that and but that was a praise for god so we all experienced a good laugh and we brought jesus into it another person was saying that they they don't like the soft music they feel recharged when they put on some heavy, <laughs> heavy metal. And I, that for me, I'd be like, ah! <laughs> but for them, they get to, they love it. They appreciate the beats and the sounds and, and they appreciate the person that did it, you know, as a talent of theirs. And they relate that back to God. Something that's really, really, really important is that when we take these moments to come away, to stop, to slow in any way that's best for you, that we're still coming away with God. I do it differently than you. You do it differently than me. But God had a plan. God didn't just make extroverts and introverts and have us not need each other. It's essential that we do it together. God made us need him and each other. It, in the workshop, we talked about the importance of how an introvert cannot just stay alone. An introvert at home who's only alone and doesn't ever get out, that will cause them to feel burnt out, tired, depressed. That's no good. God created them to need to be alone to recharge, but to need other people. And that's where these extroverts come in because they love fellowship and belly laughs and getting together and praising. So we need each other. But an extrovert who spends so much time outside and giving and giving and giving and giving doesn't get that time to slow down, they are going to get burned out and tired. And, and what are they going to do then? But they have an introvert, which is why it's so important that we are many but one, like we learned about in Romans, will help slow that person down. So the main things that we learned in the workshop oops oh oh that's me sorry <laughs> so something that we learned in the workshop was that you have got to and I have got to find a way to slow your life down 
and rest and take care of yourself throughout the week. Whether it's appreciation for nature, going away, looking at the rocks and the water, whether it's uh, on the couch like me, (laughs) in your blanket, whether it's out with your friends, whether you call your friends and you're like, hey, I just want to get us together and I just want to talk and fellowship and laugh and praise God for whatever he's done in my life, whether it's coming here on a Sunday and eating together, these things are essential because if you stop doing them, you're going to get burned out. And we're going to miss the importance of what Jesus said in Matthew. Come away with me. I'll show you how to take a real rest. So the workshop really hit home with me. The importance of me stopping and taking care of myself so I can take care of others. And I'm glad that I have extroverts in my life who will pull me out. And as an introvert, I can slow some of the extroverts that I have down. But if we do it together, then we are really one body of Christ. Something else um, that I want to share with you guys that really moved me is, is a song. Now I'm going to pray and thank God for joining us in this discussion and then I'm going to talk to you guys about this next song that we're going to sing. About. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so, so much for being here with us. Lord, we are a body of Christ and every member that is in this group is so essential to it. And we can appreciate the gifts that they have as whether they're introverts or extroverts and what we can give and share with each other to build up the body of Christ. Thank you so much for telling us that we need you and we need each other. That there's a time for rest and there's a time for having fun just for having fun. I appreciate you, Lord, and everything that you've done for us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So there is a song um, that when I first heard the song, it's called Sweetly Broken. And when I first heard it, I loved the tune of it. And I had the tune stuck in my head, just walking around to to eat or to chapel. And then we heard it again, and I was really able to appreciate the words that I was actually singing. Because in the song... He says that he is sweetly broken, but that the cross beckons me. Now that stuck with me. Because the same God that beckons for you is the same one that says, come to me. The same God that was so wholly surrendered is the God who says, please come to me and I will show you how to live a restful life. I will give you peace. It's the same God. So as we sing Sweetly Broken, and I know that some of you may have never heard it before, it might be new, you can just reflect on the words that are singing. And if you want to just sit and absorb it all, you're so welcome to do so. If you know the song and you want to belt it out, that's also perfectly welcome. But I want you to take away that it's the same God. He beckons us individually, and he loves us as a whole. So let's, let's sing to him today. <laughs> 